12, 15, 25, got three into one of the 15 now, uh, down in the bottom end. There seems to have reformed the group of the 19th century and how this area developed in terms of um, this, this kind of influx of people and immigrants to the area, the establishment of Manchester as an industrial town and the way it's forced to get land in this area. And the problems that that caused here in that area. As we've seen overall that kind of already, obviously going to be the same historical context as here, but I'll be able to show you again in terms of the archaeology how the archaeology that we've got here will work to the kind of things that we've seen and the legislation that comes into the and how it's changed over time. So if we go to the end of the street now, we'll see material in this area here. So we've certainly got surviving archaeology at the top. If we go to the end of this road, I think this is the back of Old Mount Street. It would have been there. It's a fair wee bucket there, isn't it? We've got cobbled road there just leading all the way down. We've got housing on one side. These are documented as being the deepest cellars in Manchester. I'm going to extend something like 15 feet. I don't know if that's entirely true. They're not 15 feet here anyway. But you can see the construction is fairly flimsy. Um, it's got single tin partition walls, similar to the, the construction of the ones that we saw down the other side. The difference with these is, and you won't be able to see this from where you are, where these buildings front onto this road, onto Mount Street, we know that they've got central, they've got cellar lights, spring lights into these cellar areas. But the same is also on the reverse. We know further down this section in these walls, we've got cellar lights that have been bricked up at a certain point. So, whereas uh, some of the cellars down there would have had no light or access for, uh, into the rear courtyard, essentially, these ones certainly do. So they look slightly more well lit. Um, certainly slightly larger as well, look at them. Kind of the, the footprint of them than the, the ones that we've got down there on Gamble Street. We've got external courtyard that served some of these cellarage, this some of this cellarage space. Um, as we were saying down there, we can recognise from the mortar um, that these are generally, and from, from the ceramics as well, these are generally late 19th century in date, um, which shows that again, these kind of Ribbies and toilets, this sanitation, although it was put forward to be built in the middle of the 19th century, it's not until much later on that the majority of this stuff is actually being built, that the law is actually being worked upon and acted upon. I think, I think initially the Earl of Derby owns, owns much of this area. And I think it's bought up in plots by individual landlords that then commission local builders to build tenements and build in maybe two or three at a time. Not certainly not in complete lots from from the evidence that I've heard from the other chaps. Um, so initially, no, it isn't the council. I think the first municipal housing that we get, if you does anybody know Oldham Road as it comes out of Manchester, on the right hand side as you go out opposite Wing Yip. There's a, a large courtyarded series of, of flats. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but they were the first municipal buildings in the world. Um, I certainly know that there are at least grade two listed those buildings, those flats. So they were the first to be owned by a local borough council, built by a local borough council for the people that lived there. <laughs> they would certainly have been a long way from what these places were, these flats were. Yeah. Right, we, oh no, it's fine, no, question to go, question to go. We look at the other side there, we've got some much modern stains. Um, the difference here is that a lot of these privies, a lot of this sanitation that, that 
added on to your weighting slightly earlier. So here, we can see there's a difference with the lime mortar in these, these structures here, which is earlier. But this slightly browner mortar, not the grey stuff that's over there, is probably mid to late 19th century. So we can potentially say that these, in this area, they're possibly acting on those mid 19th century sanitation acts to incorporate some of these things so we don't have to demolish the slums that are already there. So there is some evidence, although sparse, that they were acting on some of this legislation quite quickly. The majority of it says that they weren't acting on it until getting into the back end of the 19th century. But this is kind of a mishmash. This whole area is yards and privies and drainage, as you can see, there's a lot of it. We've got concrete coming in as well. Concrete is a material that the Romans discovered, essentially. Um, I can't remember the Latin word for it, unfortunately. Um, but we've kind of, we've lost the ability of how to create concrete. Um, until around 1860, when they started using um, the same materials, incorporating other kind of hardcore mixes and bricks and things into it, and they redeveloped the ability to use concrete again. So we see that coming in from the back end of the 19th century as well. So all of these things create a picture that shows a slow development over time of people trying to incorporate this legislation that comes in place to help the people that live here and to make sure that they're living in what is substandard accommodation really. It's not habitable, certainly by today's standards, it wouldn't be habitable at all, although that's, that's kind of considered it. These, these are privy, so I think how you start roughly here, there's a fireplace in here, and maybe you've got the back of the building, possibly some building running in here, and then some toilet blocks off that side, and it bends round. I know there isn't a full my memory serves me right on the mapping, I haven't got it with me, but it isn't a full swathe of buildings that run right the way through, it's kind of staggered along that road. Um, so we have got the buildings in there with the earlier mortar on, and then we can see the adaptation later on in time of them adding these things onto the rear. It did go right the way along the street, yeah. I think as it goes that way, it staggers back and in. So I think you've got more single, possibly single dwellings going that way, whereas these ones are slightly larger on this end. This isn't this isn't my area. I, I've been supervising the area down at the bottom, so I know much more about that area down there than I do. My grandfather was 21 and 23, and they married each other on the land street. Have you got that on the map? On the centre, yeah, yeah you can see them on the centre. Yeah. Sometimes if you've got to troll through them, I'll be on the centre yeah. straight on to try and find yeah. them. It helps. Some of the maps have got numbers on, but not, not many of them have. It's the other ragged school, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. 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 Where does the um, sewage fall then? I imagine there'll be a central sewage line that runs under this, this road here. And then Certainly where does drainage. It It'd feed off okay, into it. It'd feed off eventually, probably into, into the river, the river. Yeah. until they develop a, a proper sewage system later on. Yeah. Is that an open drain? Or it certainly looks like rain it, it? <laughs> It's quite large for um, to serve for, as for rainwater, isn't it? I think. You know, at this stage, yeah. I'd be hypothesising. Yeah. It. it looks like there's a gas fitting next to it. There's a little one here as well. So it looks like there's some kind of fitting for gas, but this has got nails in and there's, there's some wood that's kind of um, fused there and corroded in to the iron as well. So that there must have been some upright in here, some wooden uprights in here. What purpose yeah. it serves, unfortunately, I can't really explain. Just about, I think. <laughs> It wouldn't have been a very pleasant existence though, and that it would have been an existence, it wouldn't have been a life, it would have existed. If it's off the back, potentially. Yeah, that's the chimney breast in there, yeah. It looks like they divided this space later on though, doesn't it? The really flimsy built wall that seems to run through the middle of it. I'd have to look at the maps, maybe to determine what essentially that's 
We have down the other side where we've got the salad. You tend to get the pasta in the salad there. So you'll get either pasta or a, a wine wine. Yeah. Occasionally, you will see it on some of the bricks dotted around, but that's because they've been reused. Some of the salad that have been either demolished or built in, they will tend to use a lot of the handmade brick. You can, with some of the brick, dependent on the size, you can date it quite well, but because they reuse the brick, it makes it a really, uh, it's not a very valid sort of date. We know that around, I think it's the turn of the 19th century, they formalised for the last time a standardised brick size because they introduced a brick tax in the 18th century, or the 17th and 18th centuries. And to avoid paying a brick tax, brick makers changed the size of the brick. So we, because we know when brick taxes come in, we know we can date quite accurately bricks of a certain size to a specific time period. But like I say, 19th century, we've got a standardised form of bill, so any of this stuff can be right way through. Is it it looks like they had earth underneath. We've got a lot of paving slabs or brick in the area. So we've got bricks on that back one over there. Obviously this is paved on that side as well. That's on that side there. I think they were originally back to back along there and they converted into courtyards later on to serve for the privy. Have these courts got the name or are they numbered? Off the top of my when we get down there, I'll get the other map off Aiden and I'll show you what which ones they are. I've only got the maps for that area that we just popped in. But you're basically stood on the back of Old Mount Street now, which is the road that runs up between these two rows of terraces. I see most of the courts that we had down there. Yeah. There was an internal division in this house here as well. You tend to find that when back to back houses are built, they have an internal courtyard around the plot that they're built on as well. So you have access to the rear housing essentially from the courtyard staircase. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure which one that's. Do you know which one that is, Adam? Uh, I forget now. Is it Naples? <coughs> Again, we've got the map. We've got the mapping down there. That's, that's Old Mount Street, just there. That's what? Old Mount Street. Just Mount. Street. Not old, or That's Old Mount That's Street, it. yeah. This is back of Old Mount Street, but obviously now defunct. I'm not sure which one that is. Dial Street first. Yeah. Dial Street first. 